what would my friend Jerome Brown be thinking right now? And he knew what that was going to mean when you're talking about a fifth-year option, $22 million. Boy, I'll tell you what. There's one dude that has seen the NFL go from guys making nothing where they had to have off-season jobs. Hey, when Merrill started, let me just say this to you. Bill Berge probably owned a hot dog stand somewhere down in South Philly. <laughs> and then he played linebacker for the Eagles during the year. And I would say, I would, I would say also, too, let me, let, let, let me think there. Wilbur Montgomery probably sold cars. <laughs> Let's bring in my friend. Meryl Reese, the golden voice of the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> that was back when people had to make a living in the offseason. Uh, welcome aboard, Meryl. Thank you so much. Here, here, here. We got. We can't hear you. Can't hear you. This way. There you go. Now, got me? Got you now, Meryl. I used to have a show on Monday nights from a place at the Bellevue called the Broadway Restaurant Bar. And Jerome kept asking me, when can I go on? When can I go on? When can I go on? So I said, well, you can go on next Monday night. He said, that's great. So Monday morning comes and I said, uh, I saw Jerome. I said, okay, I'll see you tonight. He said, tonight's my bowling night. I said, your bowling night? You wanted to go on my show, it's tonight. Oh, okay, I'll cancel bowling. So we do the show at the restaurant bar. And afterwards, Jerome goes over to the deli counter and he orders six corned beef sandwiches. He said, I'm going home to watch Monday Night Football. I said, are you going to have a party? He said, no, these are for me. <laughs> Jerome was thinking about food, Dan. Not Always. money, food. <laughs> I've never, I, 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 we, we walked into a place that, you know, if you eat like a 24-ounce steak, you get it for free. And so this is a place down in South Florida. and. We go down there, so I'm like this. I walk into this place, and Jerome goes, look at that. You mean to tell me I can get that steak, that 24-ounce, and I'll eat them? He ate three of them. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. Hey, by the way, Merrill, I think you get a reprise this uh, reprise this week because you don't have to go to that shithole up in D.C. You get a chance to broadcast this big game coming up on Thursday, at least at home in your confines. I mean – this is a pretty big football game coming up. We're going to find out about both teams. I heard Jaw say something interesting this morning on WIP. He said that Jaden Daniels is the greatest talented rookie quarterback he has ever seen. I mean, works in NFL films. He's seen a ton of guys. He got a football team on the Eagles side that since the bye is great, playing great. It's a pretty big football game. It, it is a big football game, and I have nothing but respect for Ron Jaworski. Uh, nobody is better at evaluating quarterbacks than Ron. I throw out the little caveat and say so far, because I think there's a learning cycle for the rest of the league when a new quarterback comes in, like C.J. Stroud. Uh, this year, he's, he's had some struggles. It's like a baseball pitcher going around the league and in the offseason, everybody breaks down tape and they say, well, he does this. Or, you know, when he does this, you know he's going to his left. Or you, you get a line on people. Jalen Hurts had a, an amazing second year and, year and then last year had, had some things that he had to really take stock of. And he's playing as well as anybody in the league right now. Do you know, um, I saw a stat today that in the last 45 games, Dan, Jalen Hurts is 34 and 11 as a starter. The only quarterback in the National Football League who is slightly above that is Patrick Mahomes. I mean, That's they're winning a ton of football games too. And if you think about it too, Merrill, it's they have a complete fate, facelift on the other side of the ball compared to 22. There's very few starters, so they've been winning with that, with a, a a defense with a new coordinator. I mean, since that coordinator, Jonathan Gannon, who by the way is doing exceptional work with yeah. Arizona right now. I way. mean, they you've had two different coordinators since that 22 team, so the amount of winning that they're doing right now is pretty remarkable when you're talking about how they've continued to win and have the consistency of winning. 
and, and the, the thing is, you talk about both sides of the ball. Uh, when Saquon Barkley came over as a free agent from the Giants, I mean, it was huge headlines. Saquon Barkley, the Eagles make a great deal in picking up Saquon Barkley, and they're right. It was. Meanwhile, a guy who nobody even knew much about, more of a special teams type, snuck in the back door as a, as a free agent. And let me tell you something. Zach Bond, number 53, is he means to this defense almost what Saquon means to this offense. He is playing at an all-pro level. Big plays every game. I don't, yeah, yeah. I mean, like you you mentioned it, all pro, not just pro bowler, but all pro. And I was talking to Gary Cobb yesterday about this. I've never seen anything like this before in my life when a guy who was projected to be, if you remember something too, Merrill, they brought him in to give him an opportunity at being an edge rusher. He wasn't being brought in to be an interior linebacker. And I remember Vic saying, I don't know if he can play it, but he's a fast learner and he's got athleticism. So we'll see. You know, I give Howie Roseman credit for signing him, but I give Vic Fangio credit for finding him because it was his call. And I and I asked, I asked people around, I asked Clint Hurt, and I go, how does he find these linebacker prospects? He's done it his entire career. He said something interesting, and I think I brought this up with you the last time you were on. He goes, you know, if I know that a guy's going to be good in special teams, he's going to be traditionally a pretty good safety or he's going to be mm -hmm. a pretty good linebacker. So have you been more impressed with what Vic has done on the defensive side or what you're watching on how Kellen is handling the offense? Both, really. They're both wonderful coaches. They both know what they're doing, and they know how to the, – the old Andy Reid cliche – put the players in positions to make plays. They're they're both really excellent coaches. I mean, this this it's sensational. Saquon Barkley continues to just absolutely impress week in and week out. Last week, I think they kind of pulled up a little bit, the reins, because they knew they had Washington on a short work week. But, Merrill, I'm going to ask you one more time. Surely you're impressed and shocked with what he's brought to this team. I mean, he didn't look – I don't ever remember Saquon Barkley looking this good in New York. Maybe his first or his fourth year, he kind of showed glimpses of it. I mean, but I did not think he was this good. And I'll also throw this out. He's on pace for 350 carries. He's never had more than 290. Are you concerned about the workload? No, I, I'm not. Because if the Eagles keep winning, or it's not going to be like it was in Dallas, but he didn't play in the fourth quarter. I mean, Nick took everybody out in the fourth quarter. They have a Thursday game, and he'll do that. If this team will win by some decent margins, maybe Saquon won't have that estimated total of near 350 or above. Uh, he'll he'll remove him. He'll give him breathing room, and he will lessen his practice load every week. So I think Nick's pretty good at figuring out how to save a player for the long haul. I think he'll... I think he'll make the right decisions. Now, as far as Saquon is concerned, I am not surprised that he's as good as he is. I was surprised that he was less productive in New York because I'm a Penn State fan, and I watched him at Penn State, and I saw how brilliant, absolutely brilliant he was. So I thought he would, I thought he would storm the National Football League and be an elite ball carrier the way that say Zeke Elliott was when he first came into the league or, or some of the others, you, you see that immediate impact, uh, you know, King Henry, uh, when, when Derek Henry came in, I mean, he was knocking bodies all over the place. So it didn't happen so fast. He did have some injuries. My only fear was with an ACL and some of the things that he had that missed time in New York, that when he came over here, maybe he'd be a bit slower than he was at Penn State. He'd still be a good back, but a bit slower. He's not a bit slower. He is he is as fast as he was as a college junior, a sophomore. I mean, he's he's something special, and he's a great teammate. Great teammate. You know, it's funny. I'm watching Derrick Henry do the same. I guess when you're around better players, it kind of gives you the fountain of middle career or something because both those guys are really looking great here. Um, you want to talk about another guy who's, who's really looking great in his – 
fifteenth year, Brandon Graham. Brandon Graham. And Vic said to him, Hey, you're not you're not here on a farewell tour. He said, You're here to play football. And Brandon Graham, this is the most amazing guy around players and around anybody. I always tell people if I walk into the facility in the morning and I see Brandon Graham, my whole day just got better. Comes over, gives me a hug, tells me how good everything's going to be. I mean, he is he is the spiritual leader of this football team. For a broadcaster like yourself, Merrill, and you got Mike Quick sitting next to you. Who's great, do, 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 do you get a little excited when you wax the Cowboys still, or is it just another game? Or, I mean, see, you go back all the way with Vermeil and those guys, and Dick wanted to always beat the living hell out of that team, and he said that, it, you know, that's our rival. But for you, you know, you try to keep everything as, as, as like, even as you possibly can, but surely killing the Cowboys makes you feel good. Well, can, can I read you something? Yeah. Uh, this is my comment. I do a commentary for all the Odyssey stations. Uh, so, so I'm giving you a preview of Thursday's commentary, okay? All right. Is there anything better than an Eagles NFC East showdown? Birds and the boys fill the bill. But as we saw Sunday, the boys, especially without Dak, can have their own showdown with the Giants. Tonight's the night. Quarterback Jaden Daniels and the back to relevance Washington Commanders are in town. Is it do or die? No, not with six games left, but it is a lot of fun. I love that. That is fantastic. I mean, like Paul Harvey there. There you go, folks. <laughs> <laughs> but, but can you imagine that that the Giants and the Cowboys, yeah, they're they're both in the bottom of the barrel right now. And they 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 can have their own shutout. But here are the Eagles. And Washington hasn't been relevant in how long? Since like 96. I mean, that's the last time that they were relevant was back in that time here. Merrill, do you feel better about this 7 and 2 team than you did about the 8 and 1 team a year ago? Did, did do you look at this team trending better than what you saw a year ago? I mean, can you make those comparisons because a lot of folks were really high on that team a year ago when they were 8 and 1. To me and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of I'll, I'll kind of pollute the question here a little bit. I just think there's so much young guy. There's so many young guys on the team, and there's so much high ceiling that there just seems to be more optimist optimism, and there seems to be just a youth energy that compared to a year ago. I don't know. I mean, it seems like they're enjoying themselves a little bit more than they did a year ago when they were eight and one. Do you feel better now than you did last year at this time about this defense and about this team? Dan, if I told you yes, I would not be telling the truth. Because okay. here, when they were 10 and 1, they had just come off a one Monday night win in the rain in Kansas City. And Jalen had outplayed Patrick Mahomes that night. And then also in the rain, they beat the Buffalo Bills back at the link with Jaden Hurts quarterback drawing his way to the end zone in overtime. So they're not just 10 and 1. They're 10 and 1 coming off wins against two of the best teams in football. Yeah, so right. Me to say I was expecting the roof to fall in would not be the truth. I think that I'm thinking Super Bowl. This this team is is on the roll. And I, I thought they were the, I thought they were just absolutely amazing. But but of course it didn't happen that way. And now looking back, I say perhaps I should have looked for signs because there were signs that there were things that weren't quite sinking. There were signs that this team was not as good as its record. But at the time, I didn't see it. Now I look at this team and they struggled for the first, first for September. But you know what? Saquon Barkley said it to the media the other day. He said, uh, look, yeah, you guys were on us and, and look, that's your job. But I could have told you we weren't panicking. We believed in ourselves, and we realized that after four games, we were basically still playing preseason games. And you and I talked about it before that these teams it, it, in September September football is an extension of the preseason. But you look at this team right now, and they have won five straight games. Yeah, a couple of them have been, you know, shaky. But you know, they, they could have lost that Jacksonville game. But then you go back and you say, well, you know what? They could have and should have won that Atlanta game the second week of the season. And the end, the roof fell in on them. But 
Uh, this is a good football team. It's a good football team. I'm not going to predict a win on Thursday night, but I'm not going to say that I predict or think that they're going to lose. I don't know. I don't know because you have two really good football teams playing great football. And I agree with Ron. Eagles haven't seen Jaden Daniels yet, but he's been tremendous. And Jalen Hurts, he's the lowest his quarterback rating has been per game over the past four or five weeks is 115. So he's playing, he's playing great football. Um, my only concern would be is in the first half of Dallas, you know, the turnovers and the sacks against the 28th ranked defense, the Dallas Cowboys. And then when they decided to run the ball, they're starting to look a little bit more like 22 to me. And I brought this up to everybody the other day too, Merrill. If you look at the numbers now and what you're saying, he's playing terrific ball. He's kind of on the screws of what he did in 2022. He had 3701 passing yards. He's got on pace right now for 3756. He had 22 touchdowns then. He's going to pace got 23 nine interceptions this year versus six that season, but they're kind of still on the screws here a little bit. Now that they've decided to run him on third down, you know, like Gary and I were saying, the one thing that kills and he crushes teams when he's got it third and long and he takes off running, he is an absolute weapon. My only problem I have here, Merrill, the teams that they've played are nine and 28 since the bye. Okay. That to me, eight. it's the schedule. You have to line up in who you have in front of you. You validate the next three weeks you have this. On Thursday, you're playing against the fourth-ranked total offensive football team in the NFL and Jaden Daniels. Then you have the 10th-rated offense in the Rams. Then you have the number one-ranked offense with the Ravens in the next three weeks. Don't you think, Merrill, in the next three weeks, you're going to get a true sense of where this team is? Because you and I know, can't count wins, you can't count on anything. But what you do do is you count on trends and you look at how a team is trending. You beat those three teams. And I say this if you go two on one versus this next stretch of games, you're, I think you're the team to beat in the NFC. And you know I what? think these two teams will, these three games will determine that. They'll, they'll the tell a lot. They will tell a lot. But then the Eagles have a couple of what you would like to think of as safety nets at the very end of the season with back-to-back -back Dallas and the Giants. Yep. And I, I don't mean to disrespect those franchises, but I'm looking at poor Dallas losing Dak Prescott. They're, they're not, first of all, they were struggling with Dak Prescott, yeah. but I think Dak Prescott's a pretty good quarterback and you take him out for the season and they're, they've really got problems. And then you look at the, the, the Giants and what they're going through. And I mean, they, I mean, I, I, I actually felt for them when I watched that game from Munich and saw them fumble in overtime and give the give the game to Carolina. So it's, you know, but the, these are teams that are really struggling and the Eagles should be able to, if they have to tack on a couple of wins to get their playoff positioning right, I think they ought to be able to do it. But you are right. I, I can say that I feel very good about this team, that Nick is doing a great job preparing them and, and putting a lot of effort into cleaning up things like turnovers and putting them into it goes through a lot of tape. He said that if, if you want to be good, you have to look at your turnover mistakes. If you want to be great, you have to look at everybody's mistakes. And so they see tape of college turnovers and other teams' turnovers and takeaways. So they, they learn as much as they can. But this is a, this is a well well-prepared team right now. They really are. And they're, the, the locker room couldn't be better. It couldn't be better. And Jalen is a leader. You know, last week he went, he went along the benches after the defense saved him and forced them into two field goals instead of two touchdowns. And he, he went along that bench and, and thanked all of those defensive guys and praised them. So he's, he's a leader and he's a, and he's a terrific, terrific quarterback. How about this too, Merrill? I mean, can you remember in your time where you've had two prospects in the secondary like this with Cooper DeGene and also with Q that, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say it. I mean, Cooper DeGene, I actually like that guy's skill set because you could put him in the slot. You could put him at free. 
I, I'd like to see what he can do on the numbers to see if he can play and be out there on the perimeter. Um, he is, I mean, the, every week he plays, he's showing you a skill set. He his zone on how he runs to the ball, his pursuit angles. I mean, Mitchell on the other side, it's the 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 um the light's not too big for him. Can you remember the Eagles ever having two younger guys in the secondary like that? That you just I, went, wow. Yeah, like wow is right. I thought I had, but then I realized that they weren't rookies. Uh they were they were second year players when they hit the field a number of years ago. You might remember Lito Shepard and Sheldon Brown. They were very, very young and they were gifted too. But these two guys come in and uh <laughs> Quinion Mitchell and Cooper DeGene, they don't look like rookies. They don't look like they're they're playing with confidence. They're playing with maturity. Tell you what, I'm I'm very excited about watching the matchup between Ken Quinion Mitchell and Terry McLaurin on Thursday night. Absolutely. Uh, he's not gonna be able McLaurin's a terrific receiver, but he's not gonna outrun Quinion Mitchell. He's not gonna leave him in the dust because Quinion can run with anybody. Absolutely. A couple more for you here, Merrill. Um you know, when you when you look at where they are in these coordinators, and especially on Vic, boy, man, I'll tell you, he's having as much impact on players' careers. Look at Nicobe, you know, and 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 Merrill, I know, I know that a lot of people have been I, I'm with Seth on it. I never saw it. I just never thought I really saw it. I didn't see it at all. I think he has false steps, but boy, the impact that Vic has had on him. And the impact, obviously, he's had on Zach Bond. If there's two players that have benefited from a linebacker guru, because that's his pedigree as being a linebacker guy, his impact on the Kobe and his impact on on Zach Bond has been remarkable, almost to the point like Jeff Stoutland with the old line. Yeah, and what you're seeing here, the, the those two players have benefited the most from him. Well, let me let me add a third who ran out of gas at the end of last season, but right now. He has been a terror, and that is Jalen Carter. Jalen Carter has been absolutely unbelievable. He is a he is a fierce defender. Absolutely, he lived um, up to the point. Yeah, and and you know what I'm starting to like with him is a year ago he ran out of gas. Yeah, and I think he understood. And I think maybe watching Fletcher, you know, the one thing that I thought they were going to miss. Um, Merrill was the fact that you had a pro in Fletcher Cox that knew how to be a pro yeah. each and every single week for eight, 17 weeks. Carter's now doing this. If they play 65 plays on defense or 58 plays on defense now, he's only missing like two reps. I mean, he's playing more volume right now. And I think his impact has impacted Josh Sweat. Josh Sweat's another guy who's having an under the radar season where, guess uh -huh. what, Merrill? He's trending towards having a year like 2022 where he has 11 sacks. Great. Great year. Playing great football. I mean, this is this is terrific. I, I'm this is a lot of fun to watch. This is a good team. And uh, it's it's amazing when you talk about the guys who who have, are coming back from last year and like and you you mentioned one, the Kobe Dean. He flies around the field. I mean, people thought when he came out of Georgia, is he too small? Are there injury considerations? He just – every time – I look, I see that number 17 every place, all over the field. They're they're really good. Last one here for you, Merrill. You know, you, you've had a chance to watch trends and see teams play against one another, and there was a great battle, Cowboys and, and the Eagles back into Jimmy Johnson, Buddy Ryan. I think this thing has a chance, Merrill, to be something that you're going to watch. Jaden – uh, Jalen Hurts versus Jaden Daniels for the next five, six years, that this could look something like that, and this could be the beginning of what could be a really great rivalry between these two teams. You say that, and that appears to be the case, but none of us have crystal balls. And if you say I that, thought RG3 was going to be that guy, and then what happened, right? I thought we were going to see some mighty battles between Jalen Hurts and Dak Prescott. Yeah. And they hardly played each other. I think they played against each other in the same game twice. Hardly. I mean, maybe three times, but but one or the other, well, not Jalen, but but Dak has missed 
a bunch of games that they that Jalen has you know been in and Jalen I think was missed one where it could have been Dak on the other side so that was supposed to be a great matchup but you never know because injuries even injuries even to big strong guys who don't seem to be vulnerable can occur with the blink of an eye I mean I you, you know what to me if you looked under the word indestructible in the dictionary you would find a picture of Aiden Hutchinson and look, look what happened. One play, one moment, and he's gone ostensibly for the season. So you don't know. None of us know. We can project it. We can salivate over it. We can hope for it. But in this sport, you never know. So I see U.S. Navy, and I've got to tell you a quick one here. So I broadcast for many years, five or six years. I think I did the Army-Navy game. You know, we go back and forth between Baltimore and Philadelphia. So I got a chance to, you know, I have, obviously when I was with the Cowboys, I got a chance to be friends with Roger Stahlback. So he goes like this. He brings a guy over. I'm sitting there and I'm broadcasting from the convention center, you know, right across. It's connected to the Marriott there in downtown Philly. So I'm broadcasting at that convention center. And Roger Stahlback is sitting with me. All of a sudden, this guy comes walking over, and I'm such an idiot, Merrill. I had no idea who he was, so he sits down and he starts talking. And Roger goes, you know who this is, right? And I go, no. I go, it's Pete Dawkins. So Pete Dawkins, I go, Heisman Trophy winner, Pete Dawkins? And he goes like this. He goes, yeah, Pete Dawkins, Heisman Trophy winner. So I had Roger Staubach and Pete Dawkins. I had him sign up football, and I ended up giving it away to charity. It, it generated about $25,000. Uh, for a charity for a make a wish foundation and we did that and that game have you ever been to that game the march oh, out oh. Uh, i Merrill, i used to say this to to people all the time army navy are you kidding me a 200 pound old lineman 200 pound d lineman i had no idea what that game was i go down for the march out and i'm watching all of this i'm watching the stands this was in philly actually and i'm watching this and i said this is the greatest college football game and I played in Miami FSU when it mattered. Merrill, it's the greatest and the last bastion of true college football. Well, I, I, one of I, the greatest I, of all time. I still tear up every year at the end of that game when they go to the sleep alum to the to the student section and they sing Navy Blue and Gold because I was a I was a naval officer. I was a public affairs officer. So you know where my heart is, although I love all the military academies. And, but, when, but, but when Navy plays Army, you know, I do have a very, very special feeling. And one of the great things, although I never have met him, but I received a beautiful letter last summer uh, after I was named the Roselle Award winner by the Hall of Fame from Roger Staubach. And I will treasure it forever. And I, one time we went to, we went to um, Dallas, and we were staying in Fort Worth. And the Naval Academy the next day was there in our hotel to play Middle Tennessee State. So when the colleges are there, the souvenirs tables are all over the place. And I bought a number twelve Naval Academy jersey, and I gave it to my great friend Brad Sham, who does the Cowboys. And I said, I've never met Roger, but could you have this? sent to me and uh, signed by Roger and on the on the numbers number 12 it says to Merrill a great Navy fan Roger Staubach oh so it comes in the name the it's it's on the front but the number is the number is signed it's very very small so we the, the yeah it's on the back so Cindy my wife took it out she had the numbers reversed and it's in a big shadow box in our family room Roger Stolbach's jersey sign that it's it's one of my prized possessions. One of my favorite pictures I ever have, Merrill, is I'm at Lincoln Financial. I had the entire Philadelphia pol um, police folks that were there at the game doing security. They're behind me. And all of a sudden, I'm sitting there with all the police from Philly, and a guy comes up behind me. He's seven feet one. He turns down and looks, and it's David Robinson. And I'm going like this, and – I'm like, it's, it, 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 I, I met, I, I met generals. Um, I, I was going to ask you, were you handcuffed at the time? <laughs> oh, well, see, it's a Miami thing. Okay, I get it now. Oh, I see. Okay, it's a Miami thing here. You, you, you were too polluted by Jerome. <laughs>
great call on Thursday, uh, Thursday night. It should be an absolutely sensational game. Thank you so much for all your time always. Thank you, Merrill. My pleasure, Dan. Take care and have a great day. You bet. Merrill Reese, the golden voice of the Philadelphia Eagles. Always great. Yeah. I had a, I have a great picture. My cousin was there at Lincoln Financial, and the uh, Philadelphia police ended up coming up. God, I love those uniforms, too, that the Philly Cobbs had. And David Robinson um, sat there with my cousin. I think I got a picture of that. And by the way, this is where I met my friend Barney Barnum. Um, hey, we just had Veterans Day, so indulge me here. We had I got tickets for my cousin and Cilio Army Navy. It, I loved that game, and I loved it in Philly. I I, I also liked it in Baltimore too. Um, I did, man. I absolutely loved that. I'm trying to find. Um. Let's see here. I got a picture of me and Roger. Here. There's the Army Navy. Let's see here. Let me see. Let me make sure I get it there. There's Army Navy right there. The coins that you get. Um, just a great time. Here's Big Seals tailgating. Here at Army Navy. They're at Lincoln Financial. Um, here's my cousin with the Philly Cops. Um, yeah, really a great time. I took this picture at Lincoln Financial from the booth where I, me and John McMullen were screaming at one another. I don't know, somebody somebody was saying some shit about it the other day here. Yeah, Stallback is one of my favorite people. Um, I love Roger. He's the richest NFL player of all time right now, even worth more than Brady. Here's me and Roger Stallback. Roger and I are dear friends. Love Roger. Just a great dude. Great, great guy. All right. Hit the like button. Xander's going to join us at the bottom of the hour at 4.30. And then the former MVP of the National Football League with the Washington Redskins. We will talk with Joe Theismann, owner of a Super Bowl ring as well. Do me a favor. Where are we on the like button right now? Want to, I want to get that number up over 300, if we can, by the end of the program. Where are we on that like number right now? You guys have been awesome today. By the way, your takes are great. We're going to talk a little bit about the coordinators and also my top 10 teams, my coach of the year, and my top 10 quarterbacks. Um, 228. Let's see if we can get that puppy in this hour up to 300. I'd love to see possibly we can get to 400. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.